How important are paths and continuity to the effectiveness of your ad campaigns? How important do you think it actually is in terms of conversion to have a streamlined process set up so when you run your ads, the path to persuasion, the path to purchase makes a lot of sense for that consumer? Well, today we're going to get into that and what you could be leaving on the table. Thanks for checking out this episode of Mailbag Monday. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of Mailbag Monday. I'm Nick Williams, founder and principal consultant of Deep Rich Consulting. Let's dive straight in. So before we actually do that, make sure that you're subscribing to our Mailbag Monday. Only those who are members can actually send their questions in. So if you're watching this, uh, whether it's on the site or on YouTube or some other platform, please make sure to, we'll include a link, make sure to go ahead and subscribe so that you are able to actually send your question and anyone can actually watch these, but only the members of Mailbag Monday can actually send the in the questions and have a chance for us to run through some strategy for that member. With that said, let's get straight into it. So the question today comes from Andy, who's managing partner of a company uh, in Cincinnati and actually expanding to Louisville called Dart Rush. Uh, Hey Nick, how can I make my ads more effective? Any tips to improve ad development strategically from an executional standpoint? So uh, thanks Andy. Yeah, so the interesting thing about ads is you can get into a lot of the, you know, you can get into the weeds in terms of the copy development, using all the characters, the headlines, the the CTA. There's a lot of things you can talk about when it comes to ads, but whenever we're doing some form of an audit for someone, a lot of it comes down to, and, and people think, you know, ads, it's, it's just understanding the algorithms, right? No, it's not. It's understanding the path to purchase for the consumer. It really is understanding what the ast- actual customer journey is, because depending on where they are on the customer journey, there are going to be appropriate times and appropriate as defined by the having the propensity to actually listen to what you're saying. So there's going to be a heightened chance of conversion at different points along the journey. For instance, someone who is just now becoming familiarized with your brand is not ready to purchase. So hitting them with ad copy that is highly targeted towards making an actual conversion as it relates to dollars and cents, it's not going to make sense. You need to be building trust. So depending on where you are in the uh, in, in the actual journey, that's really going to change the message you send to them. So understanding the journey is actually usually the main part that drives the best ads we've seen. And that's how we develop ads. It's not simple as just making ads. We don't do that. We start from the consumer. We start how they actually purchase and how they get to the ultimate conclusion, which for you is, is an actual advocate, not just a consumer that's transactional. So that's the goal of ads. And with that said, in order to build a more effective process, a more streamlined execution, as you talk about the strategic execution, yes, our number one thing, the number one takeaway you're going to take from this video is uh, continuity. So we want to talk about continuity in terms of more of like an analogy as it comes as it relates to racing. So one thing um, we like to explain to people is your continuity is a lot like your slipstream. So whether you're an IndyCar fan, NASCAR fan, F1 fan, like like I am, which I will work in any chance I get to talk about uh, F1. But um, the slipstream is a very important process, this idea of slipstream and dirty air. So, and, and we'll actually map it out so that way it makes a little bit more sense. But for now, let's just talk the analogy at a high level. The How it goes is when you're going down a straightaway, when you're, and you've seen it, you know, people will follow someone closely. The reason someone's able to gain on someone else Um, And you could see it whether in the Tour de France, anything, anything with racing competitively. um, You actually can drive a lot faster aerodynamically when you're right behind someone in the slipstream. And that's because it's undisturbed air. It's a pocket of air behind another vehicle or person that the air is blowing over them. They're interrupting it. Therefore, you have clean air and you can pick up on the benefits of your aerodynamic vehicle racing, you know, whatever cyclist, whatever the case may be. Your ads should work a lot like slipstream. And when they don't, they, they look more like dirty air. Dirty air is when you're not close enough or when you're around curves and the downforce pushes that air down. And so what happens is if you are directly behind someone or if you're, you know, your ads are directly behind each other as they should be leading to landing pages that correspond to that actual ad. If you're not directly behind someone and you have some space in between, that car interrupts the air and then the the dirty air, you have to interrupt that dirty air. So if you're not close enough, the aerodynamics don't work. So they're just disrupting the air and then all the air they just moved is now getting back in front of your vehicle, whatever, your bike, and now you have to push through that air. So around turns, especially, you, you see a lot of people when you're racing, 
they lose a lot of time and that makes a lot of sense um, it, it, it also leads to oversteering and understeering so when you think about your ads that's what we're going to describe this when you run your ads they shouldn't just be executed and thrown out in the ecosphere right so when you run your ads and we actually Andy we took a look at your situation uniquely so one thing we're gonna one thing we're gonna look at is and actually map out for you is a problem we think that can be addressed and uh, it might make sense for other people to see as well so we notice that when you run your ads it's a tar it's not necessarily targeted so it looks like you're trying to hit people in your new launch city so Louisville but people in Cincinnati are still seeing your ad because that's where the main base of your business is that's not necessarily the most optimized way to do that you should be targeting your audience so that your ads can enter that slipstream so if you're sending a Facebook ad and let's draw it out you've got your Facebook ad right here now your face this is going to be your paid ad channel doesn't have to be Facebook this is your paid ad channel so next when this goes out instead of just sending this to anyone you need to be sending this to very targeted people that are in that are in line with the objective you're trying to accomplish so you're trying to build out Louisville so these should be people that live in Louisville Now this falls into ad continuity, right? Because when you actually target people in Louisville, your copy can talk about people in Louisville. We noticed that when actually we were delivered your ad. So as an impression, I don't live in Louisville. You have Louisville that's clearly targeted for. I immediately say, no, nope, not for me. Wasted impression, 100% wasted impression. And so that way when your ad continuity, if you target these people and then send them to landing pages that speak specifically, so you've got these people, you can send this to a landing page And this landing page should talk about all about the benefits of Louisville, um, all things Dart Rush Louisville. So when you run your copy, when you run or when you run your ads, all of your copy can be streamlined to target the customers, the ideal customers you're trying to target to convert. It can also speak to the messages. So if this is a new launch, you need to find out, is this new to Louisville? And if so, your copy changes. If there are competitors that are already in the area, you don't need to educate your audience about what this actually is. So you have to understand what is the journey of the people you're trying to target. And then you have to make sure that your ad execution, you're focusing on continuity. And so don't just run your ads and boost posts. Run your ads, tailor your copy, and send them to landing pages that speak specifically to that ad. Because if a consumer sees an ad, they expect there to be zero, absolutely no change when they actually click a button and go to where you want them to go. The more you deviate, the increased chance, the higher the likelihood that they're not going to convert, that they're just going to hit, your bounce rate's going to increase massively. So the more you deviate from the message you just sold them on, so you got them to say yes, don't deviate. Focus on continuity. Get in the slipstream. Make your ads go it make it make sense in terms of an eloquent journey the ad should go directly into the landing pages that tell the same story so that way every consumer you are maximizing your chance of conversion so hopefully that makes sense um, if you have any questions at all reach out to Nick Williams at deepridgeconsulting.com uh, we can answer any of your questions make sure to go ahead and subscribe so you can actually and become a member um, go to the site and become a member so you can actually ask your questions and get stuff like this. We're going to follow up and uh, make sure that uh, Andy here gets what he needs. But uh, that's the benefit of, of joining. So uh, thanks for checking this out. And we will see you, if not next uh, Monday for Mailbag Monday. But also check out our Whiteboard Wednesday and Funnel Friday. It's a, it's a similar concept, but um, the how we actually work through this and, and the actual things we talk about are slightly different. So check those things out and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.